You and people with these disabilities images, I really would love for them to feel the passion and the intimacy that I felt. That moment that I felt. And that that's why the lighting is so warm. It's to draw you. I'm not trying to show you a mugshot of the guitar. I'm trying to show you the soul. Yeah. My name is Lisa Johnson. Lisa X. Johnson. Uh, she's Lisa Johnson. She's a photograph of rock and roll. And uh, she was in LA as well. She's photographed Nirvana and a lot of really cool bands. And uh, we get mixed up all the time. So I am Lisa S. Johnson. And thank you guys all for coming out tonight. It's such an honor to have you here. And I just have a few people that I, I would like to acknowledge and thank. Um, first of all, the cutting room for hosting this event tonight. Thank you guys so much. Steve Walker, uh, Adam Sands, who's, uh, who helped me plan this, put this party together tonight. Just an awesome, awesome crew. Um, let's see, uh, Guitar Shop TV is here tonight. Brian Lippy, he's covering this. Uh, he's a, a friend for the last couple of years, and uh, he's interviewed most of the guitars that are in this book on his website, Guitar Shop TV. Check it out. Uh, my publisher is here tonight, Marta Hallett from Glitterati Publishing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Glitterati. Uh, all the girls in the front are those bitter girls who are helping us to sell books tonight. And uh, Marta, thank you so much for taking on my project. I, I can't quite see where you are, but thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Glitter, glitter Corner's over there. And um, without John Campbell, my literary agent, I would not have Marta, Cam Marta Hallett. So John Campbell is over there. Uh, if it weren't for him, I wouldn't know Marta. He hooked me up and uh, got me my publisher, and he just is a rockin', rockin', rockin' literary agent. Um, I have to compliment my designer, Smog Design, who designed the front cover. How about the cover? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's 108 rock star guitars for a cosmic reason, and when I sat and explained with them the reasons why, uh, they just got to know me, and Nick Steinberg, who is a guitarist, who is performing at Webster Hall, actually, on Thursday night with his band Tusha Moore, a guitarist designed my, my guitar book. So he garnered this information about me, about my cosmic reasons of 108, which you can read in the first page of the book, Why 108. Uh, and he created that front cover with a lotus flower and guitar headstocks and just made it a very cosmic book to open. So smog design. If you need a rock and roll book, get them. And I have them because of Marta Hallett, my publisher, introduced me to them. Um, the video that you just saw and a bunch of videos that you're going to be seeing on social media coming up, there's 13 guitar stories that we did. Uh, one of them is Pearl Thompson's guitar story that you will be able to see on live and you're going to hear him play tonight. Uh, but they're really intimate stories about some of the, that's what everyone always asks me over the years, how did you get access and what happened when you photographed the guitar? I was going to hire a writer to interview all the artists and, and do a, a book like that where they interviewed the artists and it just was, became too compelling to tell my own stories. And so you're going to read this book and little stories uh, about each guitar and what happened in the shoot. Um, and the guy who put these videos together, the one that you just saw, is uh, Dan Petullo from The City Drive. And uh, they're a production company that works out of both LA and New York, and they've just done a rocking job. And I wouldn't know about them if it weren't for my one half of my publicity team, Jeff Albright, who's here somewhere. Uh, Jeff and I have worked together for the last two years. Jeff Albright, rock star PR. Uh, he helped me probably with the last uh, 45 or 50 shoots. Uh, he helped me to get Jimmy Page, Jeff Beck. Um, I'll, Rick Nielsen, after I spelled his name wrong in my request, um, you know, keep persisting and you eventually get the win. And um, just uh, a wonderful publicist to work with. And Congratulations. Great job. Thank you, Jeff. Um, next to me, my other half of my PR team is Cheryl Northrup, who fucking rocks, yo. She rocks. Yeah. And, uh, she's made it happen. Uh, USA Today, uh, we're in Guitar Fiction Auto, Relics Magazine. Um, I, I can't even remember all of the publications, and, and Jeff as well has gotten, this morning Jeff had me on Premier Radio, 14 radio stations across the country. This is going to go viral, so you got the chance tonight to get a copy of the book that's signed on 10-8, The Cosmic Date, tonight. And for those of you who already got the book, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, thank you, Jeff. 
Uh, this beautiful scarf that I'm wearing tonight, you know, most photography books that you see include a signed photograph by the photographer. And uh, I wanted to do something different and something that rocked. And Keith Richards is always an inspiration uh, with his scarves hanging on him and on microphone stands. And I thought, you know what, I want to have a scarf in my limited edition book, not a signed print, because my images look great big, not small. So, of course, they rock small too. But. Um, anyway, I met uh, through a mutual friend, somebody named Anthony, Anthony Lalore, who's here tonight, who's been a long-standing friend, and he introduced me to this wonderful woman, Bridget Rump, who's here, who designed this scarf for me. And had it really, really rocked so hard. I love this scarf so much. Everyone loves it. It's purple. It's the color of the season. So if you got, if you get it, you're definitely in uh, season, in um, fashion. So Anthony and Bridget, thank you. All the press that's here and that's been part of this, uh, Chris Gill, you know, he's writing this thing for Guitar Aficionado. Uh, GuitarWorld.com has had it online. I mean, just incredible, incredible press. So thank you so much to the press. My friends that are here, there's so many of you here. I, I just, uh, you know, thank you guys all. Um, my family is here. My sister Colette is here from Toronto and her husband, Michael. Yeah. Uh, she's two years older than me and was always an inspiration growing up with music. I grew up around uh, a lot of country music, Patsy Cline, the Loretta Lynn's, Ollie Parton, Marty Stewart, uh, Merle Haggard, Chet Atkins uh, was my dad's favorite player. And um, I grew up with my dad playing, and he inspired me really truly to photograph guitars in the end, is, is because of my dad. And my stepmom is here, she's the greatest stepmom in the world have. And I'm just honored that they flew all the way from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada to be here tonight, along with my niece, Corey Quinton, who also fucking rocks. Yeah. She's my favorite wing woman. She's always there for me. She's done shoots with me. We did Glenn Tipton together and Scott Moore together and uh, up in Edmonton. And um, I just love her so much. And she's been here for me tonight. Uh, I have to thank Michael Braunstein from the Les Paul Foundation. Um, you know, Les was the first famous guitar that I ever photographed. He got it from the beginning. I, at the time, was shooting black and white photography and hand coloring prints, and I delivered these prints to him because, uh, you know, I, I thought, hey, I'm going to shoot famous guitars. I may as well start with Les. I came to New York. He sh played every night at the Iridium Room, Monday night. So I went down, and uh, wasn't long. I met Paul Lewinsky, this guy right here. And, uh, you know, I'm so pleased and honored that the Les Paul Trio is performing tonight. And uh, as much as I love Nikki Parrott, uh, Lou, I mean, uh, Paul Lewinsky was the bass player when I knew the trio, and Nikki, for some reason, was not available tonight, and, but Paul was, and so I'm so honored that Paul is coming tonight with the trio. And, uh, of course, Lou Paulo and John Pugliani. But, I mean, these guys always make sure, every time after that first shoot with Le Les's guitar, when I come to the club, after the show, or like in the break, one of them would always say, Lisa, you know, and my dad always also always taught me, you be quick and you get around corners and next thing you're in the green room. And uh, these guys always supported me from the beginning and, and uh, Lou's guitars in my book in the special section in the back of the very first guitars that I photographed in black and white and hand colored and uh, Les is there and so is Lou's. And uh, I'm doing a jazz book, and, and uh, Paul's bases are going to be there, and your, your other signature guitar is going to be in that, that jazz book. Uh, but Michael Bronstein, when I sat with, with, uh, with Les one night, I, I needed someone to write the forward for the book, and I sat with him, and I started flipping through pictures and saying, okay, here's Keith Richards' Les Paul, here's Slash's Les Paul, here's all the Les Pauls, and you're their hero. Would you, would you consider writing the forward for the book? And he's like, well... I see what you're saying, you know, call Michael Bronstein and uh, set it up. And I go, well, I'm going to call him tomorrow because I don't want you to forget. And he goes, I won't forget. And he didn't. And um, Michael and I worked together and we got that done. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you, Michael Bronstein and the Les Paul Foundation. And thank you, Les. Thank you, Les. He called me and said, you got to come in and go, hey, there comes that girl who does that guitar art. 
And that's how he saw it. And he thought, he also said to me, your book, your, your, your photographs are going to inspire young kids to buy guitars. And if any of you ever saw Les Paul on more than one occasion, you know that he brought kids up to perform with him. And he really wanted young kids to embrace playing a musical instrument because it's healthy for you to do such a thing. And so, um, you know, I, I just owe a lot to Les. And thank you, thank you, Les. And Lou, that CD that you did, thank you, Les, is brilliant. And uh, it's won all kinds of awards now. And if you guys have not picked up that CD yet that Lou put together with so many artists on it uh, that Les played with over the years, get that album. Thank you, Les, it's called. Um, I've got to thank uh, Pearl Thompson for being here tonight. Uh, I just truly, truly enjoyed my time with him photographing his guitars. And I emailed him and said, hey, we're doing this event. And I really love it if you could come out for it. And, you know, he just wrote me the most beautiful letter back, and, and he's here tonight, and he's coming to L.A. for my exhibit that's happening next week on October 17th. It'll be floor-to-ceiling guitars at the Mystery Music Head Gallery, and Pearl will be back. And I, I'm so looking forward to hearing him play tonight, and um, it's truly an honor, Pearl, to have you here. Um, Vinny Martel. Yeah. Thank you, man. You know what's up? Uh, it's, it's going to be uh, so much fun to have him playing tonight, and um, you know, as well tonight, you're going to listen to Thomas Doyle, who was Les Paul's guitar tech for 45 years, and built a lot of guitars uh, with Les. And um, in fact, one of the guitars that's in the book, Brian Robert Robertson's guitar, is a guitar that Doyle had his hands on, and uh, he's just a phenomenal player, phenomenal luthier, and it's a real honor that Thomas is here tonight. Um, also tonight, uh, it's such a, such an honor for me that my daddy is here, and um, he's going to play too. Um, the Les Paul Trio, which is such an honor for me to even imagine, imagine you getting to play with the Les Paul Trio. And uh, my dad's a pro, he's been playing for many years, and uh, he still plays today. He's 76, and he's going to rock out here tonight for the Les Paul Trio. Yeah! Uh, I got a few more people to thank, and we're going to get this on the road. Um, uh, anyone here for, remember Virginia Lowell? I know Mick Brock is, was here. I'm not sure if he's still in the house. Bob Bruin was here tonight. Uh, Timothy Greenfield Sanders was here tonight. These were all my clients that I had. Nigel Scott is here tonight. These were my clients when I worked for Kodak in New York City. Um, but Virginia Lowell, um, she owned the Starfile Photo Agency. When you would read People Magazine and a lot of the, a lot of the music magazine, you'd see um, photo copyright uh, Starfile Photo Magazine. And that's because Bob Bruin, Mick Rock, all the top rock and roll photographers shot for, uh, for Virginia. And um, when she got hip to the fact that I was photographing guitars, she said, you know what, you're going to photograph all of Eric Clapton's guitars that are going to be sold at Christie's Auction House to get your butt over here. She set it up. I photographed 105 guitars in one sitting. And just recently, Eric came out with his book called Six String Stories, and 47 of my images are in that book. And they just, just came out in February right before the time of uh, from Kodak here tonight, my, one of my favorite bosses that I ever had with Eastman Kodak Company is here, he, uh, Nancy Sobin. And uh, it's because of Nancy that I ended up with Kodak in New York City. And uh, thank you so much, Nancy, for coming. And Bob Finucane and Brandon Remler and Lucy and Samaha, my Kodak brothers in arms, are here tonight. And also one of my clients, Photo Lab owner, Lali uh, Kumar. And it's just an honor that my clients, ex-clients, are here. Uh, also, uh, Michael Hausman is here tonight, also one of my clients who lived two blocks away from me. And, um, you know, one of the finest fine art photographers and a magnet photographer that's here tonight is Bruce Davidson. Many of you may know of his material. Bruce Davidson's here. He photographed Harlem uh, way back, what was it, in the 1920s was the Harlem days? Like, he has the, the, the photographs of Harlem back in the day. He's he just check out his books, the subway, uh, the, the, all of the gangs on the subway in Brooklyn. Um, Bruce and Emily Davidson, thank you so much for being here tonight. Oh uh, gosh, um, okay, my yoga brothers and sisters, Adil Rita is here. Uh, uh, Peter Gachet, my, one of my very first yoga teachers is here. Sarah Fab is here. Michelle Libner, I hope you're here somewhere. I didn't see you yet tonight. My, my yoga people are my brothers and sisters and without my yoga, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm able to stand up here and talk. Because of yoga. So, uh, I got my family and, you know, two other people that are here that are like family to me. Um, one of them sitting over here, Jill Fairbanks. 
I haven't known you that long, but your family has embraced me like you wouldn't believe, you guys. Um, Jill Fairbanks, is her, her dad's in the book, Don Wilson, founder and rhythm guitarist of The Ventures. And her sister right now is staying at our house and taking care of my dogs. And her brother, Tim, just emailed me the other day saying they got the book. And they just, thank you, Jill, for being here tonight. Love you guys. And uh, Joanna Hawk. She's here, a lot of you guys know her. She was my neighbor in Manhattan and um, one of my rock and roll sisters still today and friends with Paul. Um, and uh, I've got to say, um, there's um, an artist here. Uh, I was in South Africa by myself. I was, I've always been an adventurous girl. And in 1984, I went on a trip inspired by my sister who went and lived on a kibbutz in Israel for three months. I'm like, hey, if she can travel to Europe when she's 19, so can I. So when I was 20, Inspired by her, I ended up founding myself all over Europe and ended up in South Africa. And on New Year's Eve, one night in Durban, there I was, and everyone's like, no, we gotta go see Jaluka tonight for New Year's Eve. And Johnny Clegg uh, was the founder and, and creator of Jaluka, and he had these amazing African dancers and musicians performing with him, and it blew my mind. And somehow Jesse Clegg found out about this gig tonight, and he wanted to come, and Jesse, you rock, man. And tell him that. So thanks for being here tonight. <laughs> and I think that's all I got. So you guys, uh, please enjoy the show. Thank you for coming. Uh, Lou Colo, Paul Lewinsky, Joe Pugliotti. Tony Gagasin. Tony Gagasin. Lou's going to yeah. tell you more. And um, let's rock. <laughs>
side, right beside you. Yeah. My sunny one shines so sincere. Sunny one so true. Oh, no, Paul Lewinsky. Yeah. 
our relation to New Whiskey, because Les used to bust them all the time when Clinton was with New Whiskey. He always said, is that your sister? He asked if that was your sister, right? And, and sitting in with us, this is Tony Gagasin. Oh, there it is. First time with us, and he's doing all the perfect. Let's do a little thing uh, that Les did with the trio way back in the 40s called, you know, Blue Skies. Are you ready? <laughs> trio he was asked to do a record with Bing Crosby and uh, he went into the studio and of course Bing was the biggest thing at that time and uh, they put the music in front on the, uh, on the music stand Les looked at the music and looked at Bing and said I can't read music so Bing looked at him and says I can't read music either so they looked at the song and there was a, a gentleman changing the light bulbs in the studio up on a ladder and uh, they asked him to come down. He said he plays piano and he could read it. And this is how the song came out. Kiss me once and kiss me twice. Kiss me once again. It's been a long, long time. And it felt like this might be. Just can't keep them away. It's been a long, long time. You'll never know how many dreams can feel about you. Just how empty they all seem without you. Kiss me once and kiss me twice. Kiss me once again. It's been a long, long time. Now I haven't felt 
been like this, my dear sis. Can't remember when. It's been a long, long time. You'll never know how many dreams I've dreamed about you. Just how heavy they all seem without you. Kiss me once, then kiss me twice. Kiss me once again. It's been a long, long sort of a, a big name at that time and then he found Mary Ford, Colleen Summers and changed her name to Mary Ford and they had this big hit before we bring up our guests and here it is. Johnson was a 
great book she has, and Woo! she has to <laughs> play tonight. And here we are.
When I met Lisa, uh, I also met Gary, and uh, Gary kept in touch with me on email for many years, right, Gary? Yeah, we did. We kept the email, and then uh, things changed. Are you plugged in? I don't know if that's plugged in, Gary. I don't think it's plugged in. I know, but I don't make fun of my guitar. That's one of my model guitars. That's a Luke Hollow signature guitar. Yeah, it must be a wire. <laughs> Alright, anyway. Yeah, you're supposed to have a little wire in your gallery. No, no, here, here, the wire's right behind you. Okay, no, that's it. Uh, here we go. And uh, we kept in touch, and he only said he wanted to play with us. And this is the first time. Gary John.
we're going to bring up Pearl Thompson. Come on, let's bring him up. Pearl Thompson. Where is he? Over here on the right. Pearl, come on, let's hear it out there. Pearl Thompson. Can you leave us? Coming up now. Coming up now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, give him a little. Come on. Well, Thompson, here he is. All right. We got to work in that now.
We're going to do something called Honky Tonk. How many people remember that song?